Welcome to the November 7, 2017 regular scheduled meeting of the Davie County Board of Education. At this, this time I'd like to adopt the agenda. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. We have a motion by Mr. Hales. We have a second by Mr. Drexler. All in favor? Motion carries 7-0. Uh, this time I will ask for, well, no, I'm sorry. We need to do uh, our minutes approval. Oh, no, we're out of schedule here. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm on it now. We need a motion to go into closed session to preserve the attorney-client privilege pursuant to the North Carolina General Statutes listed on our agenda to discuss personnel matters protected by state law and to discuss student matters made confidential by the General Statutes and FERPA. We have a motion by Mr. Drexler. Do we have a second? We have a second by Mr. Hills. All in favor? We are now in closed session. At this time, I'd like to welcome you and uh, reconvene our 2007, uh, I'm sorry, our November 7, 2017 regular scheduled meeting of the Davie County <laughs> Board of Education. I'm way behind tonight. Uh, and first up on our agenda is the invocation. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to encourage, help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace as we make decisions that will affect our great county. And continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of tr truth, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. At this time, I will ask the Cub Scouts Pack 732 to come up and lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great job, guys. Thanks for coming and sharing with us tonight. At this time, uh, we're moving to approval of minutes from our regular scheduled meeting on October the 3rd. Do we have a motion? We have a motion by Mr. Hales. We have a second by Mr. Drexler. All in favor? Motion carries 7-0. At this time, I will point out um, a few items. Uh, first off, I'd like to point out a few dates on our calendar. Um, Tomorrow at 11.30, we will have lunch at Davie County High School. Um, then on the 10th, on Friday the 10th, we have a holiday for everyone, Veterans Day holiday. Um, then the North Carolina School Board Association, we have a few folks going to the annual conference over in Greensboro on the 13th through the 15th. Uh, and then our Thanksgiving holidays will be the Thursday and Friday the 24th and uh, 23rd and 24th. Um, and then our next meeting will be in here on December the 5th, starting at uh, 6. Also, I just wanted to let everybody know we have our uh, 2018 uh, meeting dates published. Um, and that's all fairly standard. Uh, we're, there's an exception. We have uh, the January meeting will be on the 9th. Uh, which would be a variance from the first Tuesday. Um, April the 10th will be a variance from the first Tuesday, May the 8th, July the 10th, and September the 11th also. Otherwise, those meetings will be, um, our regular schedule is 6 o'clock on the first Tuesday of the month, and then we have a summer schedule for June, July, and August. The meetings will start at 4 uh, in this room. And that's all I have 
for now, I will turn it over to Dr. Hartness for his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see everybody out tonight. Um, I want to go ahead and address something uh, first in my report that uh, has been a community issue the last couple of weeks. I want to just say a couple of things. A couple of weeks ago, we had a couple of our students to make some poor choices, uh, and those choices shed a very temporary negative light on an incredible high school field with dedicated and caring students and staff. I want to thank publicly our principal and assistant principals and our school resource officers for the way they responded to those issues. Um, the actions of those couple students are, they, they overshadowed really the pride and respect and dedication that we see in our students every day. And I wanted to share with you that we're not the only ones that notice that pride and dedication. This week, I received a copy of an email from uh, one of our staff members that went out to the high school staff outlining comments that they had received from 65 college representatives who were there on campus presenting materials and information about college to our students. Those 65 reps had an opportunity to provide feedback about their experience on their campus, and I want to read to you some of their feedback. We appreciate your students meeting us in the parking lot and escorting us to the gym. That's not happened at any other high school. Student involvement with the representatives added a really nice touch. It's obvious that you have high expectations for your students and they reach those expectations. Your students ask great questions and were engaged in the college fair. What a beautiful school. Your students were so well behaved, not just in the college fair, but in the cafeteria as well. Your students took a lot of materials and were very interested in learning more about college. Very nice and well-mannered students. I appreciated the questions from all the students. It felt like they had been taught how to make the most out of a college fair. Our students definitely made a positive impression on those college representatives. And I just wanted to remind all of us that we cannot let certain things overshadow the tremendous efforts of thousands of students in this district. So I want to share with that with you, and I want to thank Elizabeth Gordon, our lead school counselor, for sharing those comments from the college reps. I had another experience <clears throat> on October the 27th. As you can imagine, we have a lot of interest from other counties in our new high school facility. We hosted the county manager, and the chairman of the county commission from Rockingham County and gave them a tour of our new facility. And as we were finishing that up, the chairman of the county commission in Rockingham County looked at me and he said, I want to tell you something. He said, I want you to know how impressed I was of your students. When I engage with students today on this tour, they looked me in the eye and they were respectful and they were well-mannered. And so I, I want you to know there's people like college reps and others who come to this district and see a difference. And that difference is made in the relationships between our teachers and our students and with parents in this community and their children. So we appreciate the partnership and we're gonna continue to do good things in Davie County. Um, I also want to, to let you know that we'll never be able to control all the rumors that go around technology that we live in today, the, the technology we use is instantaneous. We've all become accustomed to instant messages about every situation as they're happening, whether the information is accurate or it's not. But um, unfortunately, um, our world seems to get more dangerous every day. If you've noticed that in the news in the last few weeks. It, but the safety of our students in the school system are our primary responsibility even before educating children. Their safety is the most important thing. And I want to remind our community, as I reminded our board tonight <clears throat> and in conversations over the last few weeks, that we have crisis plans in place for about every situation you can imagine. And we've developed those plans over the years, continue to edit those plans with the input from law enforcement and from emergency management personnel. We train for issues. And uh, if, if there is a credible threat in one of our schools, we're going to let you know. We're gonna let the community know so that you can help us through that situation. If you're not hearing from us, there's not a credible threat. So I wanted to reassure that um, in spite of the things that you might hear in the community, 
our schools are extremely well prepared for a lot of different scenarios that might happen, and God forbid that they would. So on a very positive note, let's switch gears. Um, I'm really proud of our students and the performance, and one of those indicators that those college reps were looking at, beyond looking a person in the eye and beyond a, a writing sample or an interview is scores. And academically, our students are doing well. I was in communication this week with Aaron Foyle. ACT and SAT rankings came out this past week. I want to congratulate our students and staff at Davie Early College High School and Davie County High School. Um, SAT and ACT scores, we rank number two in our region. Uh, our SAT scores are 18th out of 115 districts in the state and our ACT scores are 13th out of 115 districts in the state. So I'm really proud of the academic performance of our students. Um, on October the 17th, we had a very special visit in Davie County. President Margaret Spellings, the president of the university system, the 16 campuses in North Carolina, came to Davie Early College High School and Davie Community College Davie Campus to make an announcement about my future NC commission. It's a commission to study education in North Carolina. The president of the community college system was there. The state superintendent was there. A number of business leaders that will serve on that commission were there. They toured our early college and engaged, interacted with our students. We received a lot of really positive comments about that engaging experience. So um, Davie County is looked at as a place where people can go and and can see some really good things going on. And they selected Davie Early College High School to visit because it's one of the best early colleges in the state. So congratulations, Ms. Abcher, to you and your staff and your students for being selected for that visit. Also want to tell you I'm really proud of um, our students and our teachers that planned some incredible recognition events. Uh, Mr. Hales and I were at two schools this morning for Veterans Day events. And if you look on our website, you'll see events scheduled at every one of our schools because part of our education process is helping our students to understand the importance of the freedoms that we all enjoy and the veterans who made that possible. So if you have an opportunity to join uh, in with one of those events, you're welcome to come out to our schools and see our students recognizing our veterans. At this point, I'm going to ask the technology department to flip over to my computer and I want to give you a quick update on the demolition and the plans for the old Davie County High School campus on Salisbury Road. If you have been by that campus recently um, and you were able to peek over the fence, this is what you might see. A lot of the buildings are, are gone, the oldest buildings on campus. We're doing what we had outlined in our facilities plan and that was part of uh, the communication in the bond referendum of removing the oldest buildings. In the background of this picture, you'll see the blue roof. That is K building on the front side of the campus. That'll be the building that we keep and renovate that will become our professional development center and uh, our central offices in the future. But you'll see um, a lot of demo going on on that campus. That's one of two of the last buildings still standing on the back side of that campus. I know um, uh, there's a lot of people who have a lot of memories in these hallways and classrooms, and uh, I want to give you a peek into the future of what this campus might look like. I attended the county commission meeting last night, and their architectural team and design team shared a draft plan to the commissioners that the commissioners will consider for adoption or amendment in December. And I want to share some of the information that was shared with the commissioners uh, in the community last night. The first thing that they shared in one of their slide decks was the existing conditions. This is an aerial satellite photograph of the current campus. And I wanted to give the board and the community an idea of what is being kept and what is being renovated. So board, if you look at this area right here where my cursor is, See this outline where the school buses are there in the K building? This is the property that the Board of Education will be maintaining. We'll keep this K building and renovate this building. 
Uh, at this point, too, I'll remind folks I've had questions about the memorial garden that's on the front here. We're going to con continue to keep that memorial garden there. So um, we will maintain this property, and we will be um, discussing with the county commissioners a transfer of this remaining property in February. So that's our timeline. Uh, the demo services that we have under contract are scheduled to be wrapping up in mid-January and we'll be um, looking at an agreement and a property transfer in February um, with the county commission, so more information to come. If you want to know where things are now, the blue X's are the buildings that have been removed now except for their foundations. The two yellow X's are two remaining buildings as part of the demo. So once they finish demoing the buildings and get down the ground, they'll remove the foundations, they'll remove the, the steam pipes from the tunnels underneath, and they will grade this entire area um, flat for fu future repurposing. Last night, um, McAdams, the architectural firm and design firm that's been working with the Recreation Planning Committee and with the county government, shared this master plan with the county commission and I'm sure all this information will be up on the county's website if it's not already it will be up there soon but this is a draft concept plan presented last night and it includes all of the amenities that they would like to have as part of a long-range plan for this campus and um, they're going to try to do this or at least discover and or, or walk through this in phases um, the first phase looks like this and it would be using the recreation bond money that was passed in 2014 when the school bond was also passed. Uh, this plan would include a softball baseball field um, in this area, my cursor there, uh, an inclusive playground, a large amphitheater and green space. Um, there, the county is considering applying for a PARDIF grant to put a splash pad in this area. The county is considering also removing the B building and the cafeteria building as part of their master plan, but that'll be up for discussion in December. Uh, a shelter, a dog park, and some trails, and then keeping the existing gymnasiums here and the existing stadium, and uh, there'll be trails around this entire campus. It's kind of hard for me to describe. I'm not an architect. I don't know the details of all this, but what I would encourage the folks to do is to go and look at the video presentation that gives a 3D rendering fly-through concept of what this park might look like. And you can either write down this shortened URL or you can just go to YouTube and search for Davie County Repurposing and look for this video that looks similar to this developed by McAdams Architectural Firm and it would give you a nice idea of what is conceptualized as a, a park to go on that piece of property. So with that board, I just want to give you that update. Appreciate all of your support and for everyone coming out tonight. Have a good evening. Thank you for that, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you for that update. I'm gonna take a, a moment to uh, veer off the agenda for just a second. Um, and I want to recognize you, Dr. Hartness, um, for being awarded the um, 2017 Friday Medal. Uh, I think that's a wonderful honor, uh, and I'll just give everybody a, a little um, synopsis here. of The Friday Institute for Educational Innovation at North Carolina State University's College of Education is pleased to announce that uh, Dr. Hartness, uh, from Davie County Schools uh, will be awarded on November the 15th, the uh, 2017 Friday Medal. And this medal is in <clears throat> recognition of the achievements um, in uh, advocating for uh, innovation and advancing education uh, and imparting inspiration uh, in students. And I just wanted to uh, to recognize you and, and tell you that we're uh, proud to have you here and uh, proud of you for receiving that honor. Um, and just want to let everybody know that. And at this time, we will get back on track. 
Um, next up <clears throat> will be the United Way campaign, and I'll call on uh, Jeff Wallace to present that to us. And uh, I want to tell you, community that uh, and board, that our staff steps up every year <clears throat> and does a great job. And um, this year, we, we set our goal. We didn't come quite, didn't quite reach our goal, but I don't want that to get lost in the fact that our staff, our teachers, and all of our staff uh, raised just shy of thirty-two thousand dollars for United Way, and that is absolutely amazing. That, and we all know what teacher salaries are, <clears throat> but you also know that's some of the most giving people that, that we have. And um, it is, uh, I'm very, very proud to be a part of that. Uh, <clears throat> also each year, we recognize a group or a school or office or something that um, increases their spending. So I got a little mathematical problem here because the central office <clears throat> that Jeff Wallace is in charge of, increased by 34%, where Stephanie's really in charge. Sorry, Stephanie. she got a special seat tonight for this. Uh, we increased by 34%, and I said, There's, we've smoked everybody. Well, guess what? We didn't. All right. So uh, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Melinda Beecham from the uh, United Way chair uh, to executive director to come this way, please. And uh, she is going to share the winner of who, who destroyed us, basically. And uh, w when we do that, you want to go ahead and have them stand up here now or just? All right, how about early college? Come on up here. Come on up, Tracy, come on. Come on, let's have them stand right here. And Melinda, you want to share a few things, please? It is always um, an honor and a privilege to be here with you on this particular evening to share with you the great things, other great things that are happening in our school system. Um, I am always so, so much in awe of what goes on in the Davie County school system. And I have to say, every time I have an opportunity to be around educators, that how much I respect our educators and how much I appreciate the fact that you helped me raise my children and they did pretty good you did pretty good and I always have to take that opportunity this opportunity especially to thank you uh, again and again and again Dr. Owens especially as the principal at Shady Grove when when my daughter was there and it's, it's very special. It's a very special time here. This campaign um, may have fallen, uh, you, you know, you say a little bit short, but there was still an increase to almost 32, I get chills all over when I say, almost $32,000, guys, these folks raised for the United Way, which will go to all the programs that help to serve your students and their families. So that is, that is um, no easy feat right there, but it was done, I know, out of the caring and love for this community and, and all the people that are here that are especially living in crisis. And the, uh, we always like to give an award to the school or the department that has the greatest increase over what they raised the year before. And yes, Jeff's little area was smoking them for a while, but then the early college came up with almost a 53% increase over last year. So I think that deserves a, a round of applause. <laughs> and these, these are the ladies that made it happen. And so we, look how pretty they are. We love to take a picture <laughs> of them and so that they can display this proudly at school that, uh, that they've done this wonderful thing for their community and for United Way. So you've had a big part of this. Thank you so much. 
Ms. Tracy Castle and, and Principal Denise Absher. Thank you, ladies. Good work. Thank you. So one other opportunity we have, we, one of our um, vendors is uh, Pierce Group that offers, um, provides us with an opportunity for a giveaway for uh, United Way. And um, so we, we ask folks to give a dollar a week. Those are called building blocks, 52 bucks. So if, if, if anyone gave 50, at least $52 per week, and excuse me, a dollar a week, we, we put their name in the $52 or 52 week club. So we're going to draw out tickets for four tickets to an NC State uh, basketball game. So I need someone to help me out here. Can, can you perform under pressure? No, I'm looking at you, sweetheart. Come here. Come here. That didn't work, did it? Come here. All right. My name's in there, too. All right. Just one. North Davian Middle School. So... So, Miss Kathy Kendall from North Davy Middle. We have some North Davy folks here. You want me just, Ms. Carl, you want me to just change the name? All right. So, so Miss Kathy Kendall will, will receive four tickets to the NC State basketball game in December with special parking pass, which now is pretty valuable. <laughs> so, uh, it, close up, close parking. So. But anyway, uh, Melinda, thank you. You work very hard, and we appreciate uh, what you do very much. So uh, next, I would like to move on, uh, Mr. Chairman, to, the, uh, to recognize uh, some of our, an individual and one of our teams. And at this time, I'd like to call Mr. Coach Colin Fairby, a science teacher at Davie County High School. If you would come up, please, and I'd like for the members of the Davie County High School women's tennis team to step forward as well. Y'all come on, you can come right over here so we can. <clears throat> Coach Fairby, you can, I'm just going to let you take over if you want to stand here or stand there, however you'd like to do that and, and, and introduce our conference champions and the whole nine yards. How's that? Tell us who's here tonight. Sure. Um, so we have um, four backers, Gary Nixon, Ashley Guerra, Dave Montebello, Elijah Smith, um, Mike Lebron, Sydney Smith, and Laura Nixon.
Congratulations. Wow, that's <clears throat> impressive accomplishments. A lot of hard work, I know. At this time, we're moving on to our consent agenda, and I will ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I have a motion by Ms. Owens. Do we have a second? We have a second by Mr. Hales. All in favor? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, board. Uh, at this time, we're moving on to our first business item. And first on the agenda is our 1% compensation bonus, and I'll call on Dr. Hartness to present that to us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've, uh, board members, I've talked with each of you about um, our financial status as a school district. We ended the year extremely well this past year, and the staff recommends that the Board of Education consider awarding a 1% um, one-time compensation bonus to all of our employees in Davie County in the month of December, and we've outlined the process and procedure that we could use uh, for eligibility for that. Uh, I was so encouraged as I talked to each of you individually about this proposal, and what I kept hearing was that we're all a team, and everyone, it takes every one of us in every role to make education happen for children in Davie County. So we're in a good financial position to make this happen. So the staff would recommend what you have listed here as part of this board agenda. Thank you, Dr. Hartness. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we have a recommendation on the table. Uh, do we have a motion? We have a motion by Mr. Hills. Do we have a second? We have a second by Ms. Owen. Do we have discussion, comments? No discussion, no comments. Uh, all in favor? Motion carries 7-0. Um, I would just like Absolutely. Yes, sir. I want to have a comment. Now. Yes, sir. I sincerely appreciate the fact that we were in this financial condition that we could reward not just the teachers, but every employee in the county uh, that 1% pay raise. That, that is so, um, it, it's certainly deserving. Uh, if you look at our school system as it comes together as a whole, and that includes bus drivers and uh, personnel in the in the cafeteria, just any and everybody. So, uh, as one of the board members, I just want you to know I am super glad for this thing to finally happen. That's all I've got to say about it. Thank you, Mr. Hales. I I think we all echo those comments. Uh, it, certainly, uh, certainly glad that um, the school system's in a position to do that. The board's in a position, and uh, uh, there's no question whether uh, everyone deserves it. A lot of hard work goes on here, and um, it's just a just a token to let everybody know that uh, we know that everyone's putting a lot of time in um, and effort um, to make education in Davie County the best that it can be, and we appreciate it. Um, at this time, we're moving on to our second business item, and I will ask uh, Aaron Foyle to come up and talk to us about a waiver for class size. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, tonight, I bring for your consideration a waiver for our enhancement class sizes. Um, this past year in House Bill 13, um, that is the bill that requires LEAs to report on class size. Um, part of the rules for class size is that at the end of the second month and for the rest of the school year, as long as our core classes in grades kindergarten through third grade meet the LEA, um, requirements, which is 20, that's the class size for LEA um, averages. As long as we meet that average, then we can have up to 23 students in any individual class. Um, as they pulled this data this year, they realized a need to have a waiver for enhancement classes because that's not really part of the core instruction. So we ha do have to bring this waiver to you. Um, currently in our school system, um, we are well below the um, average, the 20 average that allows us to have up to 23. We do have a couple of overages in enhancement classes in some music sections, art sections, PE sections, and a couple of our local electives, guidance and technology. Um, so our waiver tonight would be for those particular sections and um, it is staff's recommendation that you would approve the waiver. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we have a uh, recommendation on the table and I'll ask for a motion to approve the waiver for class size enhance enhancement classes as presented. Do we have a motion? 
motion by Mr. Junker. We have a second by Mr. Drexler. Do you have any questions or comments for uh, Ms. Fole? Yes. Um, could you clarify what uh, Mark Johnson was sending out in terms of this? As, what, what was the reason going on there? So this is the first time that boards of education have ever been asked to submit a waiver for enhancement courses. Um, it's all part of the most recent legislation. So you, Superintendent Johnson sent something out to board members. We got a copy of that after you received it, but I already received similar information. Right now there are class size restrictions for kindergarten through third grade. There are no restrictions for grades four through 12. Because of the way the language in the law, if you had anything over 23 in K3 enhancement classes, then you'd have to request a waiver. So that's why this waiver is in place. I, I would suspect that every Board of Education in North Carolina will be adopting this waiver to submit. The, the State Department of Public Instruction has pulled class size for K3 from October 30th data out of PowerSchool, our information management system. They will compare that to October payroll to determine what each LEA's class size is sometime in late November. They'll give us that for verification. And then I will be requested to sign an affidavit that's part of this legal requirement, verifying that we meet the class size rules or we would have to request a waiver if any of our courses were over the maximum in K-3. The way the K-3 class size is going to be determined is the number of students in language arts sections, and that's the way I understand that. So that's the reason for that clarification from the state superintendent. We'll bring you an update in December as to what our class size is based on the report that DPI develops. Sorry for a long explanation, but it's no, a complex I, I, issue. I just wondered if he felt that school systems were being dishonest in the way that the letter sounded. Because uh, he gave a, a, an example or two of how not to figure it, and I'm thinking, you know, you'd be stupid to, to try to fudge on that stuff. I mean, it's all pretty much black and white information. I would concur. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thought maybe it's something I was missing there. Have any other comments, questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Motion carries 7 0. This time we're moving on to the public address to the board. And Ms. Wilson, I don't think we have anyone signed I'm up. I'm afraid we do not. Okay, Your thank you. Say every half a <laughs> I think we'll move on. Okay. <laughs> uh, our one and only item on committee and staff reports is an update on our manufacturing day uh, from Ms. McNeil. Good evening, Chairman Fuller, members of the board. It's my privilege tonight to share with you the results and some highlights of the first ever day manufacturing day in Davie County. I think at our last board meeting, Dr. Hartness mentioned in his update that we were planning an event, and this was truly a collaborative event between the Davie County Chamber of Commerce and our Davie County Schools. We had a vision, and we were able to work together to make this vision come true. So on October 6th, there were 143 eighth graders from North Davie Middle School. They boarded three buses. And at the same time, simultaneously, there were 166 eighth graders that boarded four school bu activity buses from Ellis Middle School. Those buses then departed to go to two different sites on that particular morning. Each eighth grader had the, uh, had the privilege of visiting, as I said, two sites. One of our sites was Davy Construction Company which was building the Dragonfly House. They shut down their construction site that morning to allow our students to come in. This slide is, the picture is a little dark, but it shows the content of some of the presentations of our business partners. Brad Chapman talked to our students about what it took to be an architectural engineer. He talked to them about the project management piece of that job. Uh, students learned that blueprints really weren't blue. They were actually on a white piece of paper. Um, they, were, they were truly fascinated with the Dragonfly House. And as they finished the presentation, the students got to go and tour. Many of them had never seen a new site being constructed. 
So they were, uh, again, amazed at the uh, site itself. Um, then Brandy Reagan from the Dragonfly House came over and talked to them about the intent of that house. So it was truly an experience. And again, one visit was from one of our North 80 schools buses, and the other visit was from a, uh, an Ellis bus. And this shows you a group shot of the students at uh, the site when they were leaving celebrating Manufacturing Day. Davie, Community Davie County Community College also participated as a site to show the educational components that fit in with some of our business tours. They had on site simulator, they're simulating uh, machinery. They had the advanced manufacturing simulator. They had the medical simulator. They had fire trucks. They had their commercial driving school folks there. Um, they had their labs open inside the building. Here you see uh, some of the students inside that advanced manufacturing lab. They were completely amazed at the robotic arm and some of the welding simulations that they got to experience in this particular lab. Uh, one of the other things in the labs, one of the highlights for many of our students was the pharmacy uh, part on this one. Um, this lady, uh, the pharmacy teacher, the one that works with them, was showing them how to make bum paste for babies. So she was explaining to them that you don't just get every prescription as a pill or something out of the out of the store. That some of the actual medicines have to be mixed and she was showing them and that was one of the comments on just about every uh, from every student that we got back that went on that tour. They were just amazed that pharmacists actually mixed ingredients and again her example was the bum paste for infants. Dex was another unique place for our students. In case you don't know, Dex is one of our recycling um, manufacturers here in Davie County. They take the tractor trailers, the trailer engines, and they recycle every piece of those engines. So the students were totally amazed at the size of the engines. As they walked up to them and they said, oh my goodness, look how large this engine is as compared to what may be in an automobile. So again, this, the size of the engines, uh, the paint room where they actually paint the cabs that they recycle and send back out to other uh, to companies, they were totally amazed with that. Again, Dex Manufacturing, they basically recycle almost 100% of everything that comes in there. When they take a truck apart, every part is used and reused and sold back to Volvo or Mac or some of the other big truck companies around. So our students were just thrilled to learn about the recycling and again they were thrilled with the different uh, parts of that particular industry in our county. Dunlop Aircraft Tires could only participate in one of the two sessions. They had an online conference going that morning. Uh, but our students learned that Dunlop actually retreads tires for aircraft. They learned that there is one, uh, they have one military contract that they actually retread the tires on the military aircraft. And then their other contracts are with commercial airliners. So when you're in a plane and you are landing, you are landing basically on retread tires. And they go through the whole process with them on the mathematics, how they grind a tire down within a sixteenth of an inch before they start applying the retread to those tires. So this, again, students were totally amazed. And if you look over in the, uh, to the far, my far right there, there is a gentleman there uh, who is an intern. He is an intern from the UK because he is, uh, that is a UK company. And the students loved talking with him because they were learning some of the different relationships about internships and why he was here and what he was learning as being part of our community as well. So again, Dunlap, they were a, a very, um, they were a very good company for our students to visit. Ingersoll Rand, um, some of our companies did not allow photos inside their plants. So there's not a lot to show you here. But Ashley Kern, the HR um, generalist at Ingersoll, was very gracious in bringing our students in. You can see them there around the conference table where they shared with them all of the different companies that they 
contribute to the parts that they use. For example, the club car, um, golf carts, club, yeah, club car. Um, the NASCAR tools that are used, all the power tools are made at Ingersoll Rand, not at this one per se, but they are Ingersoll companies. She pointed out to them that, again, referring back to the, the medicines, that when they take a capsule that is a, a particular color, more than likely it was one of the generators of our gun, air compressor that was actually spraying that coating on those pills. So they learned about the many different facets of this company. The students were amazed as they were going through the um, plant that there would be a block of steel and how it would be ground down and to, to shape the different parts that were needed for the uh, different things that they were producing at Ingersoll Rand. After that particular visit, Ingersoll also opened its doors to other tours and we've had a group from the high school that has gone down since then to, to tour. Our students were very amazed at the um, focus on safety at Ingersoll. Every student had to have safety eyeglasses. Every student had to have earbuds. And they even provided the uh, little pull-on steel-toe shoes for them to put over their shoes. So they were very impressed with the fact that Ingersoll was concerned about the safety. Pro Refrigeration, again, was another one of our companies. At Pro Refrigeration, you can look at our students' faces and you can see how intent they were and focused on what was being uh, dis displayed there with the gentleman doing the welding. They loved that. Um, they also loved looking at the different components and looking at the blueprints that went beh behind the scenes with the making of the chillers that are used. And they again learned about several different companies that use chillers uh, that are actually manufactured in Davie County. This company came to us from Spokane, Washington about a, uh, just a few years ago. Um, at Wake Forest Davie Medical Center, our, our students, again, were just, uh, they loved the new facility that uh, they were able to tour. Uh, they were able to go into some of the actual rooms at the hospital. Here you see them talking to a radiologist and talking to them about, you can see their hands up where they were asking questions. Uh, so they were very uh, engaged in this, finding about the different um, educational requirements for being a radiologist and other careers in the buildings. As you see here, they're looking at some of the artifacts from the old Davy Hospital. They love being able to go in and look at the different artifacts downstairs that came from the original hospital here in Moxville. And another component there that they really liked was the chapel. Uh, they did not know, uh, many of them, that there was a chapel in the new facility. So they were very much engaged in that particular activity. So South Davy wasn't left out. On the 12th, we had five buses and 196 eighth graders from South Davy Middle School that went to Ashley Furniture. Um, they only got to go to one because this tour was so long. Um, as they toured the factory, they were divided into groups by bus and they had different tours. And the students were able to see a sofa being made from the framework up. They, one group saw them put the springs in, another saw them putting the foam, the, uh, foam and the different things and the fabric over. So the students were totally amazed. And at the end, Mr. Ron Wanick was there with some of the other members of the Ashley team to talk to them about the history of Ashley and how, <coughs> excuse me, how Ashley was formed and about his vision from a, a young boy growing up on a farm to where he is today. So the students were very much engaged in uh, their visit to Ashley. Um, one of the comments by the students um, as we went through, as we went through Ashley, as we went through Ingersoll, and over at Dex as well, gee, I didn't know what it looked like in these buildings. My dad, or my, I know someone who works here, but I had no clue what it was like inside. I didn't know my dad really did this at, on a job site. And so they were very much uh, engaged. So again, thanks to our seven different um, companies there that helped and provided our sites for our students to visit. Um, comments from our principals, from our teachers, from our students have all been very positive. Our students really, really like this. And Ms. Haynes and I were having a STEM CTE advisory meeting and a parent in that meeting said, 
my child came home and started talking about this trip. Typically, they wouldn't have said anything, but we had comments. They were, they were talking about what it meant to them to go visit some of the industries in our county. So this was definitely a win-win situation for our companies, for our schools, for our students, and for our community. So again, I thank Davy Chamber of Commerce, Carolyn McManamy and her team uh, for working with us and helping us to line up and get our businesses to open their doors to our students for, for this event. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions, comments? I think it's, I, I think it's wonderful that, and I, we appreciate all that you're doing to help um, connect our kids with what's going on in our community. I think it's important. It is uh, that they've really, they really enjoy that. They, they, I mean, the engagement of the students was just, it was tremendous. I was at three of the sites that day, um, and just to in, interact with the students, and they were, they were fabulous. The kids were great. There's only good comments from those companies <coughs> about the safety, how they listened to this, them, and they followed the directions. Uh, so it was, a, it was truly a good experience for everyone. Good, good. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. At this time, uh, we have some closed session business that we need to finish up, so I'm gonna ask <clears throat> for a motion to go into closed session to preserve the attorney-client priv privilege pursuant to the North Carolina General Statutes listed on our agenda to discuss personnel matters protected by state law. So, so we have a motion by Ms. Owens, we have a second by Mr. Potts. All in favor? Motion carries 7-0. We are headed to closed session. Thank you.